you know, I want to start off with an ASPM overview and strategies, right? So really, um, where I always like to start these presentations is why do I care? Like, what is, what is in this for me? Like, what is it? Is this just another exercise um, that, you know, software companies have invented that we should be doing or where are the value? And I think it's really important to understand this because otherwise, um, why would you care? Right. Uh, I think, you know, identification of vulnerabilities, you might say to yourself, Bob, I got sneak, I got black duck, I got, you know, these tools. And those are all tools that I think you need. You have to have those point in time uh, scanning uh, technologies. Uh, absolutely. Right. And we actually work with them uh, to sort of generate the application security posture of your application. So I think, you know, uh, we look at those tools as critical, but there's a different sentiment when you sort of want to look at um, the posture of a particular software uh, stack, uh, whether it be, you know, the application as a whole or any individual microservice. And we'll talk about that during today's presentation. Um, compliance and regulatory requirements. And again, this doesn't apply to everybody, but um, the vast majority of us, it does, right? So if you think about your SaaS providers, right? Um, especially those in sensitive spaces like data management, um, you know, those types of areas, or if you're dealing with uh, personally identifiable information, or if you're dealing with healthcare information, um, you start thinking about SOC 2 type 2, ISO 27000, those types of, of things that require you to not only have, you know, sort of a security focused SDLC, but to be able to prove to an auditor at some interval that you're actually following these things. And so that's another aspect of the ASPM market and the ASPM tool sets. Uh, enhanced security posture. Again, I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're all looking for better overall security. You know, as a mentor of mine once said, uh, nobody wants to appear on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Um, you know, and when you think about companies that do, uh, it's typically the companies that come forward and say, we've had a problem um, and now we're, this is what we're doing to fix it. And this is what we're doing to make sure it doesn't happen again versus the ones that just get exposed, right? And so making sure that you have that enhanced security posture and making sure that you have visibility into that posture. Um, you know, I was talking to a, 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 you know, a potential customer the other day and we were talking a little bit about the fact that they have a very mature dev SecOps program but part of the problem was, and they did, by the way, uh, it was it was rock solid, world class, right? Problem was there was no visibility into it, right? So they were doing all these things, but it was really hard to sort of prove that they were doing them. Uh, of course, you know, ultimately they they felt safe, but they also felt like they didn't have the ability to sort of sh to to create exposure just within the organization, right? And be able to to go ahead and actually collaborate on that. So that's part of this. I think risk management is another part of it, right? So I think anytime you you need to make a uh, a decision uh, that is going to potentially involve some exposure, uh, you need a the collection of data to help you better understand how to make that choice, right? So risk management is another big piece of why you should care, and then obviously trust and reliability, right? I think what it gets down to is um, we all recognize as software producers that. Um, you know, these types of incidents or the types of incidents that we're looking to prevent using our security tooling are the things that would erode trust and reliability of our, of our customers, right? And so those types of breaches, those types of mistakes, um, and, you know, it's funny, in my career, I found most of the time um, those types of exposures are you know not all most of the time not malicious right it's the result of somebody making a mistake right but again if you give a bad guy uh an open door you know if the bad guy knows you, where you keep that that extra key uh, under the mat uh they will look to exploit that and so getting visibility on that and and you know um uh, sunshine being you know the best disinfectant um, being able to go through and make sure that people sort of can get some visibility into these things is another critical part of why we should care about this. Um, and then, you know, when we start talking about what is application security posture management in relation to CICD, right? So I think, you know, here we get into, you know, sort of the how we go about implementing this, right? So, um, you know, 
um, we want to make sure that we're going through the process of evaluating uh, a full spectrum of items, right? So everything from how our source code is being managed all the way through to how uh, what, how secure is the environment that we're going to deploy into. And that becomes particularly interesting when we start thinking about um, infrastructure and infrastructure as code and you know Kubernetes and Kubernetes manifests and you know sort of the things that are outside of the software stack that ultimately would impact security as well. Um, and if you look at this spectrum, you look at source, build, artifact, and deploy, um, you know, again, we go back to where are the bad guys going to look? I mean, you know, I think it's it's been, you know, tried and true that, you know, bad guys will look to, to sort of uh, exploit things like vulnerabilities or common weaknesses. But, you know, um, the other thing that we're finding and the trend that we're spotting as we saw with things like, I hate to be cliche here because everyone brings this up, but things like the solar winds, um, you know, sort of breach where, you know, it was really a tampering with an artifact. Uh, the the bad guys are getting more and more creative. They're, they're, they're instead of, you know, trying to use a battering ram to knock down the front door, they're looking for other areas where they could ultimately, you know, exploit uh, or, or add code that ultimately would be malicious and somehow benefit them. And so I think, you know, when we look at this stuff, you know, we want to make sure that we're evaluating this throughout the process. So early warning signs and developer visibility are key, right? So again, um, you know, great security posture management tools is, is, is going to provide a level of visibility for not just the auditor and not just the development manager or the CISO. It's going to provide that all the way down to the developer who can see sort of what's happening and start to make very critical decisions around sort of what they need to address in the time frame that they have in order to manage that risk. Um, you know, it needs to be operationally neutral. Um, we cannot, you know, I think one of the things that is is we hear from customers day in and day out is, I don't want to add additional burden to my developer community. And I think that's critically important, right? These folks um, already have one of the hardest jobs in the company, right? They take things that come out of someone's head and they make them work in, an, in, in the real world. And so we want to make sure that this is operationally transparent or operationally neutral to the developer. Um, and then again, of course, you know, as we look at this from the CI/CD perspective, we need to avoid surprises at the deployment time, right? There's nothing worse than getting to a point where you're about to deploy only to then discover that there's an issue, right? Uh, if you're watching this stuff throughout the process, you can catch that stuff earlier. Um, and then I think, you know, from our perspective here at OpsMX, this is the operationally the most efficient approach to doing application security posture management. Uh, and that's, I think, why we're we're so passionate about it here in connection with sort of that open CD piece. Now, um, when we start thinking about this and we we sort of set the stage for where in the process does this type of thing get inserted, we start thinking about the key strategies, right, for uh, an ASPM integration, right? So I think, you know, things like continuous assessment. And what I mean by that is, you know, um, in a traditional sort of pipeline scenario, um, you know, there are sort of static things that you're going to check for, you know, you're going to do, you know, uh, your static code analysis, you're going to uh, look at, you know, the, the, the reputation of the repos you're pulling your, um, your, your, your dependencies in from. Um, and those are all part of this whole thing. But then you get into sort of the more variable pieces of this, right? And when I say that, I mean, specifically, vulnerability management, right? And there are so many moving parts to that, right? So if I scan at the outset, I'm going to get, you know, sort of that list of vulnerabilities I'll go through and, and know that I'm going to have to do some remediation there potentially. Um, but that landscape is going to change between that point and when you actually deploy, right? So if you think about things like was a new exploit um, you know, uh, found for one of the vulnerabilities that I thought was more benign. Uh, well, are there new vulnerabilities in some of the libraries that I'm bringing in? Uh, I don't know that answer unless I'm using some sort of continuous assessment, right? And so that's where a good ASPM tool is going to allow you to go ahead and actually continue to trigger those scans as the software moves through the process. Um, the shift left approach, again, 
I think for us, um, we continue to embrace, you know, security at the source, right? I think um, looking at developers and, and, and giving them tools to make sure that the, that the code that they're submitting uh, or they're contributing is indeed safe. And those tools that they're using to do that, or they've chosen to use, uh, it, uh, are, are, you know, that stuff's being considered and not being forced to change. I think one of the biggest things that we've learned early in this process is we want to come to where our customers are. We don't expect them to come to us, right? So uh, I can't go to, you know, uh, a VP of engineering and say, hey, I got this great stuff, but it's going to require you to change the way your developers work. That's just not something that we want to do. Uh, so continue to embrace that shift left approach uh, because, again, that's where security should start. Um, cloud native security practices. There's a couple of things here um, that I think you want to think about. I think one of them is when you go all the way to the right to your actual environment, you know, looking at your cloud security posture and making sure you're following best practices there. But in the context of ASPM, this is really about, um, you know, that infrastructure as code and the configuration of the Kubernetes cluster and the configuration of how the workloads are deployed on that Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we want to make sure that that any ASPM tool that you're considering is going to force you to consider those cloud native security best practices. Um, the other piece of this is compliance as code. So here, um, you know, we talk a lot about sort of how compliance should work. And, you know, for us, it's really about um, in the form of sort of policies or uh, rules that our deployment firewall will ultimately evaluate. Um, however, and, and despite the fact that we ship with, you know, a large number of these checks uh, that are, are developed in line with uh, some of the more uh, widely popular security frameworks, uh, we also encourage our customers to uh, configure their own, right? We want them to be able to codify their own SDLC. And for that, you know, being able to 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 sort of use GitHub as or Git as a source of truth, and ultimately go through and and add um, compliance layers as needed through uh, that 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 GitOps you know sort of model is something that we think is important. And then obviously the Dex, DevSecOps integrations, and we'll talk about this a little bit later too. But again, that DevSecOps practice and the idea that you're making sure that you've got a secure build server, that you've got a secure uh, artifact repository, that you're understanding that the artifact that was uh, that was uh, that was produced by the build server is actually the one that's going to be deployed, whether that's through digital signatures or checksums. But all of that practice, uh, again, should be visible and transparent internally. Um, we should know sort of what the results of of those evaluations are. Uh, and again, I think that strikes at the core of what you know, sort of uh, as a key strategy for implementing ASPM.